Blue's Color, we um, we take on a new, uh, it, it gets just black. So what we do in reality is we add the complement, which is blue to orange, and we get a really nice dark color. So green's complement, the color that is opposite on the color wheel, is green. So I'm going to use my green. I need to clean that first. And then I'm going to, instead of putting green down right away, I'm going to add red to this first box. And then I'm going to add my green right across it. Now there's a really famous plein air painter. His name is Bob Rome. And he says that you can never have green without a little red in it. So just as you can see, this will be one part black, one part red. And then I could actually go over it again, but I'm not going to at this point. On this side, I'm gonna go green first, and I'm gonna fill that in so it's a solid green. On the second part, second shade, now I add my red. And then I could put the green over the top if I wanted so that it's two parts green to one part red. And that makes it look a little more red. So I'm going to just touch up. Now, this should be really two parts black. And that's how we make. Oh, I'm struggling to write. And that's how we make our shades, our hue, and our tints. Now we're going to move down here and we're going to make a what Mr. Kistler calls a marshmallow mo. I'm going to draw two dots. <clears throat> I'm going to draw a frown face across the top. It's not going to be a really big frown face. So I want a frown face that looks like this and not like this. So this would be bad. This is correct. So now I'm going to make a smiley face that comes this way. And it matches the size of this round face. So it's a smiley face like that, not like this. Bad. Good. Now, I'm going to draw lines that go down vertically. And they should be parallel to the side of the paper and each other. Once I reach the bottom, they should almost be, they should be parallel to each other. So on the bottom now, I'm going to, I can't put this shape because it'll look weird. I'm going to go with this shape right here, which is round. And if you think about it, when we look at this wine bottle, the wine bottle has a round edge here and it has a round edge here. So it's very similar. Now, I'm going to mark a spot. I'm going to draw a line that matches and becomes my horizon line. And it goes off like that. I'm going to put my sun over here on the left-hand side. And that's going to be my light source. So as it hits my cylinder, it's going to create a shadow. Notice how I drew my line down and it matched. Then I draw my line across and it matches over here. That's going to be my cast shadow. Now on here, as I talked about in the beginning of the lesson today, there's going to be a line that makes, and that we call that the core shadow. That's the darkest part of the shadow. Some people call it the terminator. So because that's the darkest, I'm gonna peel a little paper off of my green here. I'm gonna put green down first and it's okay if I go a little bit over the edge. My cast shadow is just as dark as my core. So I'm gonna put some green, not all the way up to the edge, but I'm gonna put some green right like that and then I'm gonna go lighter with it along the edge because it gets fuzzy. Now. I'm going to cross hatch this. I'm going to do my two parts green right off the bat. I'm going to do my two parts green in here. Now I'm going to add my red. So here comes my red and it goes over my red goes in here and you can see that red just got really, really dark. And that's what we're looking for. Now on the edges, it's going to lighten up a little bit. And it won't be as dark. Now, I'm going to make this part of my shadow be shade one. So 
I could put red down first 